Hi, Troy with Ampeg here at NAM 2018. We're here with Jeff Pilsen from Foreigner. How's it going, Jeff? It is going amazing. It's we're NAMing at its finest. <laughs> right on. So let's talk about the new Last in Line record. Phil Susan played on it, and you uh, produced it. That is correct, and uh, we're about three quarters of the way done. Just a couple more vocals left, guitar solos left. Um, all the songs are, the basic tracks are all cut. It's going to be an amazing record. I think, if anything, even stronger than the last record, and I was very proud of the last record. Right on. So, uh, do you ever, I mean, you both, both of you guys play bass, you both play Ampeg, you both, you know, produce and stuff like that. Do you ever feel like there's micromanaging or do you ever feel like you look at each other's or anything like that and try to play the other person's role? Well, first of all, you got to know that Phil and I have known each other 35 years. So, um, since we were five, uh, four, 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 because I'm 39. Um, and we're, we're actually really good friends, too. We've been friends a long time. Uh, no, I don't feel that way. I feel like when he and I are working together, it's kind of like two heads are better than one. Because he does have great production ideas. And, uh, you know, I'll have a bass idea here and there. Um, it's, it really is... I mean, we both are of the mindset that it's about the product, the overall, what's, what you're coming up with. So there's no competitive feeling or anything like that. It's just purely what's going to make it great. And so, you know, having his knowledge has been very helpful on this record. It takes it to another level, which is great. Because we've actually spent more time as friends than we have working together. We've worked together very little because we are both bass players. And for years, you know, we would be, you know, around each other, but, in, you know, how many bass players do you have in a band? Generally one, unless you're Spinal Tap. But um, so uh, so this is a chance to work together. We have worked together in the past. He he did a, a docking record years ago. He he did a lot of the work on that, and we worked close on that. Uh, but that was years ago. So um, it was it's kind of cool to have a chance to work together again. And like I say, I think the friendship sort of helps tear down a couple of barriers, and it just kind of opens up an immediate line of communication. So it's very easy to work together and a lot of fun. Awesome. So let's, uh, you just mentioned Spinal Tap. You've been out with Foreigner for years. Have you had any <laughs> Spinal Tap moments? Nice segue. <laughs> you set it up, Jeff. I'm going to tell Mick Jones you said that. No, um, uh, oh, Foreigner has been a wonderful thing, though. Ser in all seriousness, we, we do have our Spinal Tap moments, I will say, as most dinosaur bands do. Um, but you know what? It's been such an amazing experience. We had... Um, we just had an amazing tour last year, the 40th anniversary, and the tour coming up this year with White Snake and the Jason Bonham Led Zeppelin Evening is going to be fantastic. I mean, it's going to be a really great night of music. I'm really, I'm a huge White Snake fan, so for me, it's it's just going to be a wonderful night of music. Yeah, and you're also, I believe, playing Israel and the UK and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we've yeah, we're actually. We're doing Royal Albert Hall, which is pretty cool. I've never done that. Um, we're doing, yeah, we, we've done Israel before, so that's cool. But we're doing a really cool venue there, um, so it's going to be great. Um, but we're doing all sorts of things. By the end of this year, we're doing um, orchestral shows. We're going to go to Australia, and we're actually playing the Sydney o Opera House with an orchestra, which I think is going to be insane. Now, Mick will be there, but Lou will not, or will Lou... No, we are we are doing uh, at this point five shows with the original lineup as you know where both bands play, but uh, no, Lou will not be part of the orchestral shows where we go to Australia. Um, but it's such an amazing show with the orchestra and everything. it's just so cool and so different. And for me, it's just a tremendous musical experience. And Kelly's got pipes anyway. That dude can sing. Yeah, yeah we are we're not missing in the in the vocal department. I, mean, I, I love Lou and Lou is amazing, but. But Kelly is, is a force to be reckoned with, truly. So you're on the road a lot. I think it was 11 months last year, off and on. Um, what do you have to have on the road with you? What is the one thing? Sanity. <laughs> um, no, I, you know what? I uh, have to have my Kindle, so I have my books. Um, but I, I have my portable studio with me, which is great. So I, I have... Uh, you know, I have a really nice Pro Tools rig with me, so I, I actually work on some of the records that I do. Um, you know, I have a record coming out with George Lynch, McBrown, and Robert Mason of Warren called Superstroke, and that's I'm producing it and playing bass on it. Um, and George and I have been writing a lot of the music. Robert's been coming in and writing and singing. And um, anyways, I do a lot of the work of that on the road with with my Pro Tools rig. So I have to have a great Pro Tools rig with me. 
Right, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I, I'd heard rumblings about you and George and uh, Mick getting back together. So, yeah, we're looking forward to hearing that. Uh, you, didn't you also produce the new Warrant album? Is that right? Yeah, yes, I did. That was uh, called Louder, Harder, Faster, um, which was so much fun. Those guys are so great, and they're so underrated. I mean, th that's one of those bands that because they came at the tail end of the whole quote-unquote hair metal thing, they got lumped in and sort of forgotten in in a very unfair way you know they had a couple of huge hits they were a huge band and then people sort of lumped them in and called them hair metal when that became uncool and that's so unfair because they are a great band the players themselves have a great chemistry and you know of course Janie is gone um and Janie was in his own way irreplaceable but robert is such an amazing singer and frontman he, he, he changes the flavor a little bit, but the core band is still the core band, and they're amazing. They are really, really amazing. So uh, that was a really fun project to work on. I mean, I've gotten to produce some really fun things, and I'm very, very, I consider myself very fortunate for that because I get to work with great people. And, um, and, of course, you know, producing has opened up an avenue for George and I to work together a lot, which is great. We're always trying to find ways to work together, so that works great. So we have the Superstroke thing, then plus we have the Dockin' record coming out in, I believe it's March, or, no, it's April now, uh, but the Dockin' live DVD from, from our shows in 2016, and there's a new song on that, which is amazing, and, and, uh, and I produced that. So that came out incredible, so I'm very, very excited. Right on. So... All those bands, the, yeah, the Foreigner, uh, Doc, and of course, Dio, uh, of course, Steel Dragon. We can't forget Steel Dragon. Uh, who have you not played with that you would like to? I mean, for years I used to say Zach Wild, but I, you know, then I ended up doing you know the the movie with him. So now you know, and I would say Slash, but I've jammed with Slash a few times now too. So that's great. Um, and worked with Slash, so that was cool. Um, you know, there's not many left. I mean, you know. I, Paul McCartney, sure. Dave Grohl, sure. You know, I mean, but uh, in my, in our little universe, I've I've worked with so, so many of the ones that I've wanted to work with. It's 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 pretty cool. I'm pretty lucky. Jimmy Page. <laughs> That's the reason I play guitar. I love Jimmy Page, man. And you did the Bonzo Bash uh, last night, so you must be a Zep fan. I'm a huge Zep fan, and and I I think Jimmy Page wrote and uh, made the template for rock music that still holds up today. And uh, I mean, his, his writing, his musicianship, so critical to how, where music, where rock music went, where heavier rock music went. Um, and he opened the doors to so many things that you know, nobody could ever give him enough thanks and it would be adequate. So growing up, uh, speaking of Led Zeppelin and Bonzo Bash and all that stuff, was John Paul Jones your hero, your bass hero growing up or was it someone else? Well, he was a hero, no question about it, because I'm a huge John Paul. If anything, my John Paul Jones appreciation has grown over the years. Um, because when I was a kid, I just had this mono phonograph, right? And I couldn't really hear the bass on Zeppelin records when I was learning. What I was was a huge Chris Squire fan uh, from Yes, because you could hear the bass on those records. And the minute I heard Chris Squire, that changed my life. Made me play with a pick, turned me into, you know, gave me that whole avenue of sound and um so chris squire was my main idol um but john paul jones is up there with you know cliff williams from acdc i love him james jamerson love him um you've seen the documentary uh, of course of course of course i own it <laughs> so yeah i mean um john paul jones is in a very very high echelon and i love him i think he's amazing okay so on the road uh what ampeg do you rely on what rig well, I have my SVT classics. Those are the ones that, and those are not, they're, they're not the, um, they're not the standard classic, and I'm forgetting the numbers after it. It's not VR, because, although, I will say, the VRs are amazing. VRs are wonderful. But the, the ones that I've, it's, I, I, I'm, what is it called? It's a special model that was only out for a few years. Those are my chosen road, road rigs, and I love them. And I managed to somehow get the last four ones from you guys. So I think I have the last four, but, but when, I, when we rent and do fly rigs, I generally ask for an SVT VR because I think those are incredible. Um, but, I mean, I'm just an SVT dye-in-the-wool lover. So, you know, pretty much any SVT will work for me. Um, but the VRs, what an incredible amp they, those are. Those are just incredible. So how about the studio? What do you use for that? That's live. Well, studio, I have, um, I have four different SVTs that I use. I have... 
an 87 model, which is very, very clean. It was, there was only 500 made. It was made for me. Uh, I, I got four of them for the Monsters of Rock tour that we did in 88. And um, right before that, they, I'm sorry, I, I actually got it in 87. There was, again, there was only 500 made. Um, and it was, it's just a very clean amp. It, it, it kind of got that very clean, round sound for the 80s kind of thing. But I still love that because if you want a foundation that is just totally solid, very round, but still tube and warm, those are the best amps in the world ever. I mean, they're just incredible. But I also have a, a 70s SVT that I use to record with. Um, that is, to me, the best sounding SVT in the universe. Um, and I, I paid a lot of money for it. Um, but I will, um, when I'm recording in other places, I, generally, um, I will generally ask for a VR and I'll be very, very happy. Right on. Uh, this is Troy from Manpeg with Jeff Pilsen from Foreigner. They're going to be out on tour pretty much all year, all throughout the world. So go catch them. Thanks for stopping by, Jeff. My pleasure, Troy. Thanks. Okay.